Hey everyone, so it is finally time to film the first YouTube video for this channel that I'm doing as a solo project. Uh, I can't tell you how nervous I am, but also how excited I am to finally start doing this. I've been watching YouTube for, gosh, since 2006, so 13 years of my life, and I've wanted so long to be a part of this community. I don't care how much I can contribute, I don't care how big I get, nothing like that. I just want to be part of it and to be putting things out there. If I could even help one person in the entire time that I'm on this channel, then it's a job well done and I feel so fulfilled doing that. So of course, what I'm gonna do is what I mentioned in the intro video is my biggest passion. I'm going to be doing a makeup look for you all today. I'm gonna to do a full glam, full face look. I'm just gonna use all my favorite products, all my holy grails. I'm also gonna give you some tips along the way and I would very, very much appreciate it if you all could give me tips. Just mention in the comments below, anything like that. Just give me some tips on how to blend better, how to match colors better, anything like that. Just let me know. But without further ado, here we go. So the first step is to take these off because who's gonna destroy their nose concealer with glasses? Not this bitch. So I need to tie my hair back because it is long as hell. Right, now the face is in place. So the first thing we're going to do, which I already did off camera, but I'm gonna give you all this recommendation, is use a really good hand cream for your hands because you're gonna be doing a lot of blending, grabbing a lot of hard brushes, you're gonna be doing lots and lots of things with your hands. So it's good to keep them protected against any sort of bacteria, any sort of roughness that could destroy the skin, anything like that. I recommend the Body Shop hand creams, they are fantastic. This is one of my favorite ones, this is the Satsuma one, but any of the flavors are fantastic. They're all, they smell so good, they're so nourishing, they're so hydrating. They aren't the cheapest ones on the market, but they're certainly not the most expensive either. But now we're gonna take our trusty, cute pocket mirror, compact, whatever you want to call it. We're gonna check ourselves out, make sure that the hairline is in place. All of our skin is showing, ready to be covered because we don't wanna look like this no more. No, thank you. So let's go. So the first thing we're gonna do is eyeshadow. So I bet a lot of you are probably gonna be like, wait, seriously, what? You're doing eyeshadow first? Yes, I always do eyeshadow first. I've been doing this for gosh, months and months now, since I actually started doing eyeshadow because the eyeshadows that I use and the way I apply them, it's not necessarily heavy handed per se, but more than a lot of people normally would because I like it to be as opaque as humanly possible. But that also causes a hell of a lot of fallout. And that is such a problem. So first thing I'm going to do is take my trusty rusty beauty blender. Here is my, my little brush pot. How cute is this? So we're gonna go wet this and I'll be back. I just had to completely recut that and do it again because I forgot one of my paramount, paramount things, which is always have a pack of makeup wipes with you. Get something cheap-ish because if you do it my way and you go by my tips, you will be using a lot of makeup wipes. These are the Fabulous Johnson's Face Care. These are really expensive, you buy them full price, but they do sell them in Thailand for a pound a pack. And that is a fabulous deal. Go and pick them up. I buy them in three, four at a time because what I like to do before I start my makeup looks is clean off all my brushes, take this trusty Spectrum eyeshadow brush, just swirl it into it, put it down, do some lines, write your name, anything you wanna do. Just get all the color off your brushes, get them as clean as humanly possible. If you want, just clean them off, always have your makeup wipes with you. And also another tip, have a beverage. Make sure you have a drink with you. I always have my trusty Pepsi Max because it's the best drink in the universe and it doesn't have any sugar in it, so it ain't gonna destroy your teeth. Mm. Inside behind the scenes view of my makeup station currently. This is just before I applied my eye primer. How beautiful this is gonna look. So the first step to any good eye look is a good eye primer. I think eye primer is excellent for eyeshadow because it can so easily fall out through the course of an evening when you're sweating, when you're dancing, when you're slut dropping, as I often like to do. So what I like to use is the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. These are called the Pro Long Wear Paint Pots. There are multiple shades of these. This is the palest one and it is the most fantastic thing. It's basically a cream eyeshadow, but you use it as an eyeshadow primer, and it's tacky, and then you set it with a little bit of powder, and then everything blends like a butter on top of it, and they do not budge. Like, I use some really soft, really malleable eyeshadows, and they are still, they still don't move. So what a lot of people do is apply this with like a flat paddle brush, like this kind of thing. But what I do is I like to apply this with a wet beauty blender. So we just literally dunk right in there, and then we just, to our eyes. So this is the only step where I'm going to actually do this in the phone camera because I'm blind. So most of the tutorial I'm going to be like this and then I'll come forward to show you what it looks like, that kind of thing, because filming on the phone is not ideal, but obviously I'm not going to be paying thousands for a camera when I can't afford it. 
So as you can see, we're going to bring you closer, just cancels out all the veins and it gives a nice cream colour to build a base off of and we're just going to blend that in. Lovely. So now that the eye primer is still nice and tacky, we're going to set it in place using an eyeshadow. So actually for the first time in history only going to be using one eyeshadow palette for the entire eye look today that's for all the crease colors all the lid colors everything so we're going to be using the anastasia beverly hills norvina palette it is absolutely stunning this is a beautiful palette this brand does amazing eyeshadows they're so pigmented you have to get used to working with them because they are so colorful and so pigmented and they go on so intense like holy shit but they are brilliant such good eyeshadows so i'm going to show you what the inside of the palette actually looks like you'll see well there's one shadow in here that i use in almost every single look i've ever done and uh, you can see she's well used so this is the palette some beautiful beautiful colors in here so what i'm going to be using i'm going to be setting my crease with this color and all through my lid for the eyeshadow primer. Setting it with a powder you find really, really helpful because it lays a base down for shadows to stick to and to shadows to blend over. And then I'm gonna be using this brown color here. The original color is called Shade Base. The second one I'm pointing at now is called Incense. And I'm gonna be building up the lower crease and on top of my lid with this color. And then I'm gonna be going in with this more orangey color called Eccentric. And then I'm gonna build up all up to my brow because I take my eyeshadow up high because I like it to wing out as beautiful as I possibly can. I'm gonna be winging these two colors out. And then on top of the lid, I'm gonna be doing a halo eye effect, which is where you use a medium, medium-ish color eyeshadow on the inside of the lid, a dark one on the outside, and then you lay concealer down in the middle of the lid and then pop a really bright color in there. So I'm not gonna be filming a lot of this part. I'll be doing the other eye off camera, that kind of thing. But um, I'm gonna show you the brush I use. So I was using for a long time the Spectrum brushes, and I still use a lot of their brushes for a lot of my different eye techniques, but I have found that I can't really recommend them to you because the build quality isn't great. The brush itself is fantastic, but the way these are built, just rubbing them into your um, cotton pads, your makeup wipes, just general wear and tear, I've only had these like four months and a lot of them are already coming a little bit loose and that is unacceptable in my opinion for an eye brush. So even though they are great, I can't recommend these to you which is a shame, but every Anastasia palette that you get, you get one of these double-ended brushes, you get a blender on the one side, you get a packer on the other, the blender is excellent. And because it's smaller and more tapered, as you can see, I use that to go deep in the crease and go up above into my actual full-on lid space as well, because even though I have, as you can see, extremely hooded eyes, I do have great lid space, which is why I like to play with a lot of color and take it up super, super high. So we're going to start by dipping into the base colour and what I use to apply this colour to set my base is to use this which is an extremely like thick fluffy it's a packer so you can pack on colour on your lid with this if you like to put a matte down for example this is the Spectrum A08 brush so we're just gonna dip 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 and this type of colour I don't tap this one off because this whole thing needs to pack into the lid we need to pack it into there we need to lay it down we need to set so it does, we don't really need to uh, knock some lid off because there's no way it could be too pigmented because we need it to be full o fully opaque anyway. So we're just gonna pack this in, pack this in, just these kinds of motions. <laughs> I'm just like a little tap to be like, yes, finish the step. So now we're gonna go into the brownie color I talked about earlier. And this is this is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes. But I've never actually used one of the palettes that I own to do an entire look, which is very not like me. But uh, today we're gonna be trying that out and I'm gonna do some swatches for you in a separate video. I'm thinking of doing actually, just gonna build this in here, right deep in there. And we're just gonna really build, really build and build and build. Tiny issue off camera. So I had to redo a few things, but you know, we're back, we're back in business. So as I was saying, bring the lid down, go, go really deep in there. And we're just gonna start defining almost like the socket, I suppose you could say. And as you can see, I'll bring you closer. We just have a built up layer of color across the socket. And now we're going to do that again, but we're gonna do it off camera on the other side. 
good little tip in between blending. If you want to go, if you want to go in with a completely different color, which isn't going to blend with the color you're doing right now, like if you were doing like a blue and then you want to go in with a pink or something, rub it off on your hand, rub it off on a makeup wipe. This is why I said keep as many makeup wipes on you as possible. You only really use them in the eyeshadow step, really, because you're washing off your brushes as you go. But uh, that's extremely helpful. With me, I don't really need to bother so much because the second color I'm using is just an orangey version of the color I used already. And I'm just going to take that up higher. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to take the color eccentric which is on the brush there we're gonna tap tap it off one more dip which is what i always do and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go just sort of on top of the line that we started there so let me show you so see like the color stops there we're gonna start on there and then work it up so then we blend it across the line and then what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna dip into both colors incense and eccentric and then try and blend the harsh line across so that's the basic stencil of the color that we have outlined here we just took the orange up and as you can see they blend really well together they have a similar undertone and they blend really really nicely so if any of you are wondering how to like get the wing shape all you really do is you just go in with a color like this or you know windshield wipe emotions however you want to blend it and then you just flick when you get to the bottom so you're like going like this and then you flick Obviously, it's going to look um, pretty crazy right now because, don't forget, I don't have anything else on. A lot of the time when you do eyeshadow your base and everything is already done, so you don't look like a psychopath. But currently, I do look like a psychopath. So here is the fully stenciled crease, the wing out, all that kind of stuff. So now we get into the fun, but also the messy, you know, easiest to mess up kind of part. So we're going to actually deal with the lid now. So I'm going to take this Spectrum A13 blush, which is... Is, it for, is to pack colors on the lid because they did actually give us a packer in the set but that is way too big for these tiny lids and uh, I thought this is like the most perfect size for these tiny lids so I do highly recommend this brush if you do have hooded eyes but it's probably better to try something that has better build quality so let's see so we're going to go into shade dazzling right here so what I like to do with these kinds of shades is get it on the brush first, take some MAC Fix Plus. We're going to rave about this later because <gasps> it's so good. As you can see, I don't have a lot left, so I'm going to be ordering some when I get paid at the end of the month. And we're just going to spritz, spritz, spritz the brush. I don't want to do it too close to the part because I don't want to ruin the eyeshadows. And then what we're going to do with this, because it's very hard for me to show you with the way this is set up, but I'm just going to put this on the very inner to the middle. So it's just going to cover this first little bit here. So I'm going to put it on now, off camera, and then we're going to come back and show you the effect I did. So here I have started laying down the colours. As you can see, they are beautiful, so reflective. It's so pigmented, it's so pretty. But uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to this outer edge, just leave a bald patch in the middle, basically. And we're going to pack a much darker rose gold colour, which I'm going to show you on the brush right now. So, hi, oops. So we're going to go into the the shade I've hit pan on in the middle, this rose gold colour here. This is my favourite eyeshadow of all time at the moment. It is just, oh my god. So now we're going to take that colour and we're going to put it on the outer edge. So I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. Just take the colour on the brush. Fix plus. Shake it off. And we're just going to pack it in the outer edge there. <laughs> So, there's our base laid out, and I'm going to do the other eye, and I'll see you in five. So now we're going to go on to the most difficult part, and that is concealer. So, let's get our concealer out. So, my favourite concealer of all time at the moment is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. This is the super size. Ah! Oops. This is the super size version. Well, I use shade C3, which is an excellent, excellent shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this concealer, as you can see it's like a big Tarte Shape Tape-esque kind of wand, and we're going to take our concealer brush, which was the one I was talking about earlier, flat paddle brush, and we're just going to literally take it off the applicator. Now we want the concealer to be pigmented when it goes on the eye. So what we're going to do is, see that bald patch in the middle? We're literally just going to place the concealer right there and right there, and then round it off so that we create a new three-way lid. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm not going to do that close up and in the mirror of the camera because it's just not going to happen. I'm going to use my iconic Jeffree Star mirror. Highly recommend these. So as you can see, that's looking a little wild, but the shape is in place. 
We can pack more colour on if need be, you know, that's up to you. So you can either just start patting this to set it, or you can do what I usually do and you just wait a few minutes. And, and the tip I'm going to give you is use a pencil brush, this kind of thing. And just take a colour which is very similar to your concealer, for example, the base colour. I told you I'm going to use the entire palette for this look and I'm going to do my absolute best. The only thing I'm not going to use the palette for is my inner corner. So what you can do, rather than... You can wait like a minute or so for it to dry or you can literally just go straight on with this kind of colour to make the concealer set. So we're gonna pack, 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 pack that colour on. Right, so again, using the exact same packer brush that we are now going to clean off, it's time to apply our golden highlight colour in the middle. So what we're going to do is, and right here, is beautiful and bright and it's a pinky champagne colour and I think that's going to look so pretty in the middle since there is quite a pink and purpley theme with these rose golds so we're going to go with this pink or rose gold champagne colour in the middle I'm just going to um, literally just going to pack it on right over the concealer to brighten everything up and to give a halo effect to the eye And as you can see, we get a three-tone eyeshadow look. Now we're not done in the blending department yet. There's a really, really defined line where the crease cuts up there. So we're gonna go over, re over that and blend it a little bit, which will diffuse the color a tiny bit, but that's kind of what we want. Hello, well, we finally completed the lid section of the look. This is what we've come up with. I think it looks stunning, really reflective, really pretty. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna blend over that harsh line. So what I always do is just take a cocktail of the shades you've used before, so dip into both, get it nicely coated, tap that shit off, one more tap of each tap, and then we just initially blend across the top of the line so that it doesn't look so harsh. All right, so for now, everybody, this is the eyeshadow look that we have come up with. We have a ton of colour on the eyes. Now, we've just completed a beautifully pigmented eyeshadow look, so it's time for a sip. And now it's time for our base. Finally, we're on to base. So, let's get the eyeshadow out of the way for now. So we're going to, first of all, prime the skin. I am a firm believer in primer. I actually think it really does help the way the makeup glides on the face and how long it lasts when combined with setting spray, of course. So my favorite Holy Grail primer is the Benefit Professional Primer. This isn't a cheap primer, but it is absolutely fabulous. And you do get a lot in the full size. This is like £27.50, which is, you know, it's probably quite shocking. <gasps> You're like, oh my God, you paid that much for a primer. This is amazing though. There are cheaper alternatives, but I have found that this is the best one. And I haven't found one that even matches this one yet. I am quite high maintenance though, and I do use two primers. I use this one, which is the Sport FX Recovery Gel and Primer. This is an extremely cooling primer. So it's kind of good sometimes. If you can get two cheaper primers, I'd recommend doing this. Get something really cooling and hydrating and also something pore filling, mix it together. It's the perfect primer cocktail for the face. I had this one for Christmas and I actually think this is really cool. But um, this is the holy grail. I can do a look with this on its own. This, as you can see, my skin is extremely porous, so we're gonna be getting rid of it right now. <laughs> As you can see, I am a hell of a lot more smooth. You can really see the difference with this primer, which is why I love it so much. You can see how much smoother I am. And now we're going to get into the cooling primer. Now this has a really cooling effect on the face. You can actually feel it seep into the skin, which is so good for you. So foundation, I talk about this all the time. I this is the holy grail foundation for me. This is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid SPF 15 Liquid Foundation. This is absolutely amazing. So if anybody wants to know, I use shade NC15. I have really red skin, so using something a bit more on the yellow tone really cancels that out, but then evens me out, gets rid of all the pigmentation. I find that this covers so well. It starts off more medium if you don't put too much on, but you can build it to full really easily. And of course, I am a full coverage queen. That's always going to be the case. 
this controls oil, it stays beautifully matte, it photographs so, so well. And you can really layer things down on top of it without it disturbing it, moving around, that kind of thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my damp beauty sponge. This is the Real Techniques beauty sponge. I love this because it has this flat edge here, which is really, really good for blending foundation in, but then it has the pointy end for doing the baking and for doing the concealer. So what I do is I just take this pump, so that's what a pump of this looks like. And then what we're gonna do, I'll bring you closer for this, is literally just tap, 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 tap. That's one lot. And then we're just gonna do the same for the whole face. Yeah, there isn't much left in this. I'm gonna have to replace it. Boom, 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 boom. And there's another pump for here, another pump for down the nose, and another pump for under the chin. So that's what I do. We're gonna to need to go in with probably a little bit more on certain areas. So what we're just gonna do now is we're just gonna go in and we're gonna bounce it in, just literally like this. We're gonna take it right into the eye. We might cover a little bit of our wing with this, but we can brush it away, it doesn't matter. That side of the face blended in, it's quite a difference as you can see. So now I'm going to go and blend the rest off camera and fill in any of the extra areas that need to be filled in. You've all put foundation on, I think you can all do this part. So now we have a full coat of the foundation on. Some of the redness is still going to show, of course. I could go in and cover some more if I like. A lot of this down here, I didn't go so full coverage. You can still see some of the redness there. That's because I'm going to be covering that with concealer anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Obviously, I'm in full coverage up here, full coverage over here, because I'm not going to put any concealer there. But as you can see, that just it's just such a beautiful effect. It just veils the skin, leaves it smooth, matte, not cakey, but completely covers all the pigmentation, really evens you out. It is so beautiful, this foundation. That is foundation applied and bounced. So next, it is time for one of my favorite parts, concealer. So before we actually do the concealer, we're gonna take a sip. It's important to stay hydrated when doing your makeup or our face because we don't want dry lips, we want them flaking off our face. So next, it is time for concealer. So. This is really up to you what you want to do, like how much coverage you really want on your face, but I use a lot of concealer because I love to really lighten the area here so we got like this sort of shape of light and then really darken the outside with bronzer, that's my kind of thing. But of course, you can go in way less with a concealer if you like. So what I like to do is take my concealer wand and then I'm going to do this. I'm just going to start applying it here, go straight across down the side of the nose, and then bring it down so that we make a sort of weird, sort of scalene triangle. And do the same over this side. So now we're gonna dip in, I'm not done yet. This is almost empty as well. I've had this almost three quarters of a year now, it's excellent. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go down the bridge of the nose and do a dot on the tip. We're gonna do, we're gonna hit the chin, forehead. So what I like to do here is just, you know, a couple of prongs, sprongs, whatever. Just make it this kind of shape, like that. It doesn't have to be so full coverage up there. And that is the face of concealer applied. So what we're gonna go do now is we're going to bounce and we're going to blend it. So this, for this, I recommend using a thinner side like this because you can really get into the inner corner of your eye with this. So yeah, there's the concealer blended in. As you can see, the concealer blends like butter and I have highlighted the areas I've needed to highlight. You can see there is a difference in the shade, but it blends really well together really well. So now it's time for an extremely messy part of the routine and that is powder. So. I use, a lot of people ask me about this, I always bake my face, but I just bake it for like the length of the song, it's like three minutes. So I use the Rimmel Match Perfection Loose Setting Powder, this is extremely, extremely messy, so a good tip is take a really old, disgusting makeup bag, open it, tip the powder out inside the bag so that it doesn't go everywhere because this is some messy stuff, you just tip the powder out, it's extremely, extremely messy, so we end up with... So we end up with this, and what we're going to do is just literally take the blender, some of you may not be used to this, but take the blender, dunk it in the powder like that, on, this point, on the pointed edge, and then we're literally just going to press it into the face like that. 
and we want this to look we don't want to blend the powder into the skin we literally just want we literally just want the skin to be coated and for the powder to literally go everywhere like that's literally what we want like we want to we want to look like this like we want powder everywhere we want to look like we've just been to a uh, very very risky club we want to look like we're at a festival we want to be covered head to toe in it so we're going to wipe off our blusher brush because I actually use this Real Techniques pointed blush brush, which is a fabulous brush. Highly recommend everybody gets this. This is about £10, but it's fabulous. It is so, so good. I just wipe it off and this is why I'm going to use to dust off my product. Good. So we're just going to leave this cook for just literally a few seconds. I'm going to talk about what we're going to do next. So what I always do next is that I carry on sculpt in the face. So I'm going to use a bronzer and... A lot of you know this about me already, but my favourite bronzer of all time is the Hoola Bronzer by Benefit. I am quite the fan of Benefit. They have really, really good powder formulas. I've used this in absolute 10. As you can see, I'm just about to start hitting pan on it. It is absolutely stunning. It is £25.50 for a pan, so that is not cheap. That is an expensive product, but it is so good. If you're just looking for like a ride or die bronzer, you're going to use it for the rest of your life. You can use it to contour your nose, everything. This get it it is so good but i do have a recommendation for you all so benefit now has this thing called a blush bar which is a really sturdy beautiful palette this is probably the best packaging i've ever seen on a palette like it is absolutely gorgeous so what this is it has some tips in it as well and a beautiful mirror so this comes with the hula bronzer already installed and four of benefits blushes as well there is a brush there usually but i remove the brush because they're terrible you can see that it's beautiful you get four of their blushes which are stunning blushes they are sheer but you can build them up to be really really pretty and you get hula in the corner you're probably thinking like oh well that's probably not the same size as this actually it is this is a 50 pound palette which you think oh my god that's so expensive but you're getting four size pans of each individual blush and each individual bronzer that's in there so there is a 129 pound value something like that in this so i highly highly recommend it Okay, I think the bake has been sitting on for long enough, so now we're going to dust it off. So all we do is just literally just dust it off. Right, so that is the powder dusted off. This is the final effect. As you can see, it is very mattified down, but it is not cakey. It is beautiful. The skin looks great. What's really good about concealing the way I did my nose, it kind of puts the contours in place ready for you to place them later. So now it's time to bronze. So a tip with bronze that I find is just go the hell in and then tap it off, put some off on your hand, that kind of thing. If you just go with a tiny bit like this and then you tap it off, there's nothing there. It's like, what's the point? So I already tapped in twice, but what I usually do is I count 10. So I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, turn it over, that kind of thing. And then we're going to fully coat the brush. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tap, tap it off. And then we're going to put some on our hand as well, but make sure the brush is still coated. So I don't actually use contouring products. I contour with this as my contour, really. I take it from here to here in a moon-shaped motion. I do the same on the other side, and then I bridge the gap at the top with some more bronzer. I don't dip in each individual time. I just do it the one there, the one there, and then use the excess to blend the top. So what we're actually going to do is just make a pouty face, bring it in, and then just do this. And now that it's laid down, tap the brush again, and then go in with the bristles and just literally circular motion, blend it in. All right, so now that side is done, we're going to be going in on the other side. We're gonna do another 10 or so dips into the hula bronzer, tap, tap, right? And then we're gonna hit this side. And we're gonna do exactly the same, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing. So we're gonna hit around here, hit up there, and then this time we're gonna actually bridge the gap as we get to the top. So we're just doing this. Taking it around, bridging the gap, bringing it back down, go to the jaw. Take it around, bridging the gap. And that's it for bronzing. Now you can see we have a nice rounded area around here. It's a bit harder to see on this camera. There we go. You can see that the lightness is there from the concealer in the upside down triangle. And then we got the construction with the bronzer. It's not too heavy. It's not too intense. It's just right. So now that bronzer is complete, it is time for the next step. I think you can all guess what the next step is going to be. I literally just gave you a preview of what I was going to use. It's time for blush. So what I like to do with these, this one I find is a bit too highlighty for me. 
I'm going to be using this colour first. This is California, and I'm going to be building this one up. And then I'm going to be using this colour, which is my favourite. This is Rocketeur. They have really cute pans, as you can see. And then I use Dandelion, which is the setting powder version, on top. So these are quite solid, these blushes. They're not, like, super... They're not super opaque or anything. They're really, like, quite sheer, to be honest. So you can really just swirl your brush around. Tap, 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 dip, dip, dip. Tap, 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 swirl, 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 swirl. As you can see, still not much is on the brush. But what is there is super, super pretty. So I'm going to show you what I do with blush, but I'm only going to show you the end result because blending, building it up takes a while. But you smile, go right to your apple, and just swirl, 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 up. Swirl, 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 up. Swirl, 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 up. And that's what I do to achieve like a nice blended look across the top. That is how I do my blush. So I'm going to do my blush on the one side and show you the result. As you can see, that just adds a nice little flush. Really, really subtle, but still there, really pretty. The girl all thinking, Jake, your skin was red and super pigmented before. Why are you now re adding the pigment back in? Because I can place it where I want. It's not in the areas that I don't want it to be. Not in the areas that make me insecure, the areas that make me want to die. <laughs> I'm fine, don't worry. It just makes you, I don't know, make, it makes me feel so confident, it makes me feel so happy. Like, if you're someone who's like, well, I shouldn't wear makeup, that kind of thing, bye! You probably left the video a long time ago, or at least I hope you did, because this whole thing is just going to trigger you and make you feel like crap. But uh, if someone just being themselves and someone being their authentic selves, being happy, doing what makes them feel good, make you feel like that, then you have some serious issues, you need to talk to somebody. You know, people are allowed to do what they want to do these days. It's 2019, you've got to get with the times. So next, guys, what we're going to be doing is contouring our nose. So we're going to be taking a flat paddle brush. This is very similar to the one I showed you earlier that I was using concealer. This is an unbranded one that I bought from Amazon. So what you do is just dip into that bronzer. Don't tap this off. And I'm not going to be able to do this on the camera as well because this is such a precise technique that I do. So I go from here and I sculpt the line down and I draw the line down here and just bring the nose in. So you just literally sketch the line down, sketch the line down, and then tape it at the bottom. So I'll see if I can angle it correctly, but I don't think I'll be able to. That is one of the lines applied. Now you're probably thinking, oh my God, that looks insane. And yes, it does. Until it's blended out, it does look absolutely mental, like nuts. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. It doesn't look crazy even when it doesn't work because it blends out so well. It kind of it kind of helps a lot, but the uh, Benefit Hula Bronzer is so good for this kind of thing. I use my bronzer for all the contouring, everything like that, because it's just, it's a product you can use for so many different things. And you could even use this as eyeshadow. I mean, you could build up your crease with this. Like, it's just so, so versatile. And what I do then is I take a really densely packed packer like this, that same one we packed on the base color with earlier, this one here. That is the Spectrum A08. And we're gonna pack this like this. And we're just gonna literally blend it, blend it down for it in this kind of, like this. I've never really been able to do the technique where you like bring it in even more so it just snatches down like that. But my note is kind of quite, it's quite contourable anyway because it has the lines in place for you to make the shaft smaller regardless. So it doesn't really matter. It is time for the best part, which is highlighting. I just love highlights so much. I apply that with two different blushes. You know, bitch, I love to glow for the gods. Honestly, I like to be a beacon at all times. Like, I want to attract light from all different directions. I want people to see me from space. I want to be seen on satellite images, especially my nose. The tip needs to be <sighs> slam the color on and go crazy. Like, I cover my entire face with it. I love highlights so much. So, my holy grail highlighter is the Sleek Makeup Highlighting Palette. This is the Solstice Palette. So, for the longest time, I've been using the bottom left shade here. I've used it that much. I have hit pan on it, as you can see. It's a more orangey color, but these aren't pigmented highlighters. These are just extremely shiny highlighters. Like, you know, this doesn't look blinging in the pan, but we're gonna get a full, full view of just how insane this highlighter is. So you just go in, really, really go in, just coat the brush, really go mental. 
So as you can see, the brush is fully coated. So I'm gonna do a cardinal sin to a lot of people and I'm not gonna tap the brush off with highlighter because I like to go on the face with straight, straight highlighter. So let's get into the light and let's really show you how blinging this is. <gasps> I'm gagged. I'm gagging. Obviously, if you're not, if you're someone who likes a subtle glow, <clears throat> babe, this palette ain't for you. This is not your palette if you like subtle glow, but oh. We just go in, you just literally apply it like this in a sort of crescent moon shape. You can just do here if you want. You haven't got to take it around because it does emphasize the texture a lot. But I don't care because I just love the glow. Oh, look at that. <gasps> just my God. Like, literally, I don't think I've ever used a more blingingly beautiful highlighter. I mean, but see, see the effect that gives. Oh, my God. I just love it so much. Just what an incredible highlighter. If you like a blinding highlight, buy this. It's like £9 on Amazon. And then when I use to highlight my nose, so I use the pencil brush. And then, we're just going to go straight in there. We're going to coat that brush. And once again... We are not tapping the brush off today, and we are just gonna straight on the nose. Now this is gonna look this is gonna look quite stark when you're inside, but and now bringing that on like a really thin line, really snatches the nose in and really gives the nose contour its moment. Now I like my nose tip, as you can see, to be a literal beacon from space. I want everybody to see that. I want that to be the star of the look, and we're just gonna apply a tiny bit more and just blend across the edge. Oh, what a beautiful color. <sighs> I love it so much. Now that the base is done, we're glowing for the gods, we're highlighted, we're bronzed, we're contoured, everything. It is now time for the next step, which is <sighs> eyebrows. It's, it's just so, so difficult. I just, I struggle so much with it. So I kind of use a mixture of products. I use the Benefit products. These are the best pro products. They are fantastic. Especially this, the Precisely My Brow Pencil. Oh, so worth your money. It's really fine, really thin. You're not gonna put too much powder on at once. It is so pretty. And I also recommend the Brow Pomade as well, Cabrow. I kind of use a mixture of the two because my brows are quite different shape-wise. This one goes into a more natural arch, whereas this one just curls around. I use the pencil for this side and I use the pomade for this side and I sort of fill it in with the pencil. And I also highly recommend you go for the 24-hour brow setter. Now, not everybody needs to use this, but it is really, really handy because it keeps your brows in place. It stops them from moving around, the hairs going out of place with the lines that you've constructed. I really, really like this. The brow gel is not necessary. I don't think that's a necessary item for you. This brow tool, it's excellent. I use it every single time I do my makeup. I wouldn't necessarily go out and buy it. You could get, you could just use a spoolie that's on this and then buy one of these really angled brushes for really much a lot cheaper. As long as it's really, really fine like this one is. And now I'm gonna do your brows off camera. So I'll see you all in a minute. So. So after about half an hour of playing, this was the best I could do. I can, o I can only extend them, make them a little bit thicker and just give them some shape. They look awful. I actually managed to get them quite even though, so I don't really mind. It looks pretty intense, but when you zoom it out and see it as if it was in real life, it really isn't that bad, thankfully. But, you know, I need serious brow help. Like, it's just, I just really struggle with them so much. It's just so, so difficult. So now that brows are finally complete, it is on to finishing the eyeshadow, which, you know, back to my favorite part of the video. So we're gonna be using the Spectrum A12 to do our lower lash line eyeshadow. So all I recommend you do is take the same sequence of colors that you did to build up your crease before and do them in sequence and in order from here outwards. So we're not gonna go right in there. We're gonna go from about here outwards and just build it into the wing, extend the wing, shape the wing. So we start off with a lighter color and just really put that as close as you can and then take the darker one and go really really far out there but don't do it too much we don't want to look bruised we just want to look sultry smoky beautiful just super cute so now once again 
it went a little bit too low, which it sucked. But what you can do is just take a dry beauty blender or anything like this and just really quickly wipe it away. Try not to just do any foundation in the process. So now we're gonna finish blending the intense color in. So look at the difference that made. Ooh, so pretty, so, so gorgeous. I just love the wing out effect. Obviously, if you have a smaller face, maybe do a smaller wing. You don't have to necessarily go so high. If you don't have as much eye space, maybe just bring it down just a tad, it's up to you. It really all does depend on your eye shape, your face shape, the way you like to do your makeup. Like it doesn't have to be done in a very specific way. Oh, look at that glow though. Now we're gonna do the inner corner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into one of my other palette recommendations, and that is the Morphe Jack and Hill palette. So this palette is about £37, but you do get 35 colours in this, as opposed to uh, 14 in the Novena palette. For everybody who wants to know, the Anastasia palettes are £43, and they are very much worth the money, as is this. This is a £35 eyeshadow palette. As you can see, there's tons of neutrals. As you can see these two cream colours here. You won't be able to see that they're creams, but these are cream eyeshadows, and they are extremely, extremely bright. But they are also still on the gold tone. So they are the colours I'm going to be using in my inner corner today. I'm probably going to use this one because it's more brown tone than the others. And I'm just going to take the same brush that we highlighted our nose with, and we're just going to tap in there. Really, really coat the brush, get an absolute tan on there. So what I like to do when doing the inner corner is just go right in, connect it a little bit, and just tap, 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 tap. And I just had a really nice highlighted effect to the eyes. So now that our inner corner is done, our eye look is officially complete. And there's our beautiful eye look. I really like how the eye look turned out. It looks great. And I have missed using this highlighter. It's just the best thing in the universe. It's just so ridiculously pigmented. Like it's almost too much, but it's never too much for me. As long as I'm blinging for the gods on my nose and my face. So that's the look almost complete actually. All we have left to do is mascara and some lips. I think we're going to do our mascara first. Or should we do a liner in the waterline. Hmm. We'll do a liner in the waterline. I think today we're going to use a nude eyeliner pencil. So I use the Zoeva nude eyeliner pencil and these are fantastic. They're £5.50. It doesn't need to be sharpened so we're going to do that off camera in a second. But uh, they're £5.50 and they are really, really good. They're really pigmented, really creamy. They're not like too hard. They don't hurt your waterline. They don't damage your eyes, anything like that. But uh, Shop is nice and easy, so I'm gonna go and pop this in my waterline. What I like to do for everybody who wants to know, I take the beauty blender, obviously usually a full size one, but you know, I still don't know what I did with it. And we put it here and pull our eye down because if you pull with your fingers, you can age yourself, you can damage the skin. Pull it down and go right in with the eyeliner pencil. If you've all eyeliner before. I'll leave you all to do that, and I'll see you in a moment. I'm back. So you probably can't see from afar the difference that that nude liner makes. But when I actually show you the eye, see that it just opens the eye, and it just, it joins in with the color down here, also matching some of the color up there. And it's a really minute detail, you don't need to do it, but the pencils are so cheap, they're so pigmented, they're so creamy, it's worth getting one. Do it. It is time for mascara. So I, I should be embarrassed at this point with how high maintenance I am, but you know, oh well. I like to use two mascaras because I find my favorite mascara off my lower lash line drags my lashes down on the tops and doesn't hold a curl. So I use, I use a more spiky mascara that curls my lashes up on the top lashes, but when I apply that to the lower, it transfers like crazy. I usually always get mascara transfer. That's something that really happens a lot. But um, when I'm applying it, it does bump quite easily, especially with the one I'm going to use for my top lashes. That is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Waterproof Mascara. This is a mini, which is only a tenner. You can get this from Debenhams, any place like that that sells Too Faced. Highly recommend trying minis like this before you actually buy full-size products. That's what I've done with some of the MAC lipsticks and Jeffree Star lipsticks, that kind of thing. Highly recommend minis, but make sure they're actually worth the money first. Like if it's if it's like the Urban Decay All Nighter Mini, where like, where you get 30 mils for a tenner, where if you pay 24, you get 120 mils, then it's not worth it. But this is worth it. I'll show you the wand now. It's extremely spiky. 
and it, it, it puts so much on your lashes. It can clamp a little bit, but uh, most mascaras do that, so I wouldn't really worry about that. So all I like to do is take the wand, really go in and just really take it up, take it up, take it up. Sometimes I go in and curl it up, curl it up, that kind of thing. And um, for my lower lashes, what I tend to use is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara, which is a full size, and this is £11 for a full size. So even though it's technically more than what this was, but you do get more product, of course, because you're not buying a mini. So as you can see, bottom and top mascara makes such a difference. It's one of the best parts of the makeup look because it really brings the eye together. You already have the stunning metallic eyeshadow applied, all smoky and beautiful, but then you get your lashes really popping, especially on the lower, it makes such a difference. But as you can see, we have some transfer. So I am going to show you a very, very fun tip on how to actually get rid of that. So what you do is you take a spoolie, so it'd be on like a brow pencil or a brow brush, anything like that. And you wait for the mascara to dry fully. Mine hasn't dried fully yet, so I'm not going to do it quite yet. And then you literally just say the mascara is here. You swipe it away like this. Just really, really light motion like that, like a scrape almost. Because if you go really in like this, you'll take the foundation off. So you just do a little scrape. Yeah, the eyes are fully complete, the face is fully complete, all that is left to do is lips. So I'm not going to give too many tips on this, everyone's applied lipstick before and lined their lips to go with it. Uh, this is one of the parts of the routine that I don't enjoy doing because I find lining lips so difficult. And making it so the application is perfect I find really, really tough. So what I'm either going to do is I'm going to use this anyway Red Liner and then I'm going to go in with the Jeffree Star Liquid Lipstick in the shade Cherry Wet. This is a beautiful colour. I'll swatch it on my hand and show you now. It is a very, very vibrant red. And has like cherry pink undertones. Or we're going to go in with this Milani Lip Liner. The Milani Lip Liner is £4. I believe these are 3 Jeffree Star's full-size lipsticks are £16. They are fantastic, though. Best liquid lipstick I've ever tried. They dry down really nice. They don't feel dry, and they don't make your lips crack or anything like that, because that is the worst when you wear a lipstick like that. That's why I don't get on with most liquid lipsticks, to be honest, because I have quite textured lips as it is. But one tip I have for you is to go on them with a lip scrub. And I recommend Jeffree Star's lip scrub because they are fantastic. Lush is also an amazing alternative. You get better packaging, you get more product in the Jeffree Star ones, but you also pay more for them. They're £12. The Lush ones are 6 Highly recommend the Lush ones. Bubblegum is beautiful. But Jeffree Star Salted Caramel, oh, so good. And the other colour we could use is my favourite lipstick of all time, which is Jeffree Star cosmetics is rose matter so this is a rosy pink nude with brown undertones and oh my god this color is so good you will have all seen this on me so many times on my instagram i've worn this an absolute ton that's the color right there it is beautiful absolutely gorgeous or we could go a bit more dark and we could go to jeffree star cosmetics in shade gemini this is the mini lipsticks so they do these bundles where you get like eight nudes reds or like just colors in a set for about £45, and it is worth the money, but you will, if you end up really liking the lipsticks like I do, and you wear them often, you will run out pretty quick, because you get less than half the product in the mini. But it is a really, really good way to test out the formula and see if you actually like it without having to need, without having the need to buy a full one. So that middle colour right there, it's kind of like the best of both worlds, it adds more terracotta to our rose matter colour, and just amps it up a little bit. So I'm really not sure what colour I'm going to do yet. But uh, I'm going to go do it off camera and I'll be back and then we'll see how it goes. So that is shade Gemini applied with the Milani Nude Lip Liner. As you can see, it is just a more muted terracotta version of my own lip colour. Oh, it's so pretty and it goes so well with the eye look because it has a more pink tone, but also some terracotta, some browns to match the look we currently have going on. I'm going to wait for this to dry. So that's the colour. So we're almost done with the look. All that is left to do, all that is left to do is to set the makeup in place. So let's take off our headband and surprise, it's styled my hair for me. It's actually a really, really awesome thing when you have short hair like this. Just literally using that styles your hair for you. I mean, I didn't even need to put effort into styling this. That's a life hack, especially if you've got short hair like this. You can literally just tie it back and then the fringe will flop down for you. So for setting sprays, sorry guys, I'm high maintenance again. It, we gotta use two. 
The first is the MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus. This is a wonderful spray. I love this so much. I used this on a brush earlier. You probably all remember me doing that. This mattifies your face a little bit. It melts all the powders together. It just gives you a beautiful, natural, radiant look. It doesn't make you cakey. It doesn't make you dry. And it's just... It's wonderful, but if you really want an all night fix, I'm um, gonna go in with, <laughs> see what I did there, the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is a mini, but I will be buying a full size at the end of this month when I get paid. This is to die for. This literally is the best setting spray on the, on the market. There is no better setting spray than this. It's not gonna cover you in alcohol, it's not gonna damage your skin, and literally the makeup doesn't budge. Before I started using this, I'd go on a night out, I'd sweat my life away, dance, slut drop all night, because I get really into a good night out. And it would be all off, like, I'd have some eyeshadow remaining, some base, and that's about it. Like, it would literally all melt off my face. This, it makes your makeup budge-proof. Like, yeah, you'll still get some mascara transfer, that kind of thing. Your nose will probably still still flake off a little bit, because the nose always goes first, in my case. But this stuff is just the most incredible thing. Like, it's crazy how good this is. And that's why it's so known all over the world as being the best one. So what we're going to do, shake it up. And then we're going to use a good spritz of this. Make sure you are literally wet. And then quickly go straight in with Urban Decay All Nighter. So we are literally soaking. And now we take our mirror or a fan if you have a fan. I wish I had a fan. And you just fan yourself. Dry yourself off. That, everybody, completes the look. So here is the final makeup look. So I can't thank you guys enough for watching today's video. It's been extremely nerve-wracking for me. I'm sure there's going to be lots of mistakes in the editing. Give me a chance. I'm getting used to this. There's probably going to be some weird transitions, that kind of thing, because I had to do a lot of on and off filming, lots of cutting, lots of cutting it through and things like that. Um, sorry if I'm not as enthusiastic as I could be. I'm doing my best. It's it's hard, it's hard when you're like trying to focus on blending things and talk at the same time, but I've given you quite a bit of product recommendations here. Now we'll do a eyeshadow palette and swatch fest soon. I have something very exciting happening soon and something that's on the way to my house right now that I will include in its own video as well. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing more makeup looks as we go along. The base will always look the same but the lipstick and the eyes will always be drastically different. So if you want to see some really cool, colorful eye looks, please let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, please ring the bell because you're going to get notified of when our videos go up so that you haven't got to just know telepathically that we're going to upload a video because how are you going to be like, oh, perhaps it's the Jake and Pam upload day. It's not going to work like that. Subscribe, ring the bell right next door and I just can't thank you guys enough. If any of you enjoyed this, please let me know. Give me a message comment on my Instagram photos because I'm certainly going to be Instagramming this because I am so happy with how the look turned out today and thank you so much I love you all